Well, speaking of persons of courage, um, it's clear that Edward Snowden is certainly scaring the hell out of the Obama administration, um, both because they really have no idea what he's really got on them, and also because there are more young Ed Snowdens out there in the intelligence community. Um, as you know, there was a march against the NSA last Saturday in Washington, D.C., and several thousand people showed up, and Edward Snowden actually sent a personal message to the march. Um, it was read by a woman named Jessalyn Radek, who attended the march, and she's she's a representative of a of it's called whistleblower.org, or it's an organization called the Government Accountability Project. And she was interviewed yesterday on ABC News, and she stated that the Obama administration's attempts to intimidate other members of the intelligence community, to put the screws on them, to prevent them from speaking out like Snowden did, these attempts are backfiring. Um, she said, Government attempts to chill free speech by employees in the intelligence community have failed and are actually having the contrary effect, causing more whistleblowers to step forward. She said, courage is contagious. And her organization has seen increasingly more and more people coming to their door after Snowden made his initial revelations. And she said she's confident that there will be more Edward Snowdens and uh, much more will be revealed on top of what Snowden has produced thus far. It's also being reported now that in the wake of this entire expose concerning Angela Merkel, the German government is now appointing a special prosecutor to investigate the NSA's violations of German national sovereignty. Um, and a representative of the German parliament has actually traveled to Moscow to meet personally with Edward Snowden. And all the while, the Obama administration continues to deny, cover up everything, uh, only to have those denials exposed, sometimes within hours of their utterance, uh, as lies with new revelations that have been published in the press. So. I have a follow-up question to this, but maybe you can address this process of, of the watergating of Obama and the orchestration of his downfall with this entire Snowden affair. Well, there's an amusing aspect to this. It's not that the problem is amusing, but it's, it's ironical and pleasingly ironical the way in which history sometimes turns, it's, turns around. For example, this, this unit that Snowden represented, had represented, was a group of young people who had been through special kinds of conditioning with as the sports they played, the games they played as sports. And, and so they were brought in as cheap labor of a kind, relatively speaking. Instead of having the full usual panoply of people, you would train some people with, with various kinds of techniques and they would be able to conduct intelligence operations of various kinds, the input and the output as well. And Snowden was one of those people. Uh, it, he, he, so you have a, the irony. The, we have a U.S. government. The U.S. government has a have background to it, even despite the Bush family. It, there was still, even in that period, there were th aspects of people who, in the intelligence services who were honestly patriotic. Now, sometimes they weren't specifically pa patriotic in the sense that that was not their business. They were doing a job. And the job involved something which led to, in many cases, a patriotic investigation. They were disgusted by what the intelligence services were doing under the Bush tradition and the Obama tradition. We have to not realize that the Bush administration and the Obama administration are both evil. Well, the, George H.W. Bush, as president, was a, a goofball. And therefore, he was removed from government not by, by just by not being reelected, but goofball George, H.W. George uh, Bush, uh, was uh, simply the, uh, the in person who introduced something. 
He was the enemy of everything decent to begin with, but he wasn't a very intelligent, nor was George W. Bush Jr. He's not a particularly intelligent guy. He's a pretty much a, a dope-ridden jerk, um, but he was in the position and he was under Cheney's direction and people like that. So now what happens? The, you go through a, a, several ge a couple of generations or a generation and a half. They take a person who has been in the military service or the uh, intelligence services of this type, like Snowden had been. In the process, they, what they see and what they experience disgusts them. Therefore, they don't want any part of it. They hate it. They despise it. They like to play games. That's how they got in the business. They're good at playing games, all kinds of games, but they do it very well. And Snowden is a good example. The Bush administration and its sequel, the Obama administration, has learned what a simply in intelligent and gifted intelligent young person can do if they are assigned to an intelligence operation. They may get smart enough to be better than the bosses. And this is what has happened. So there are, there are also, throughout the process of today, there are all kinds of things of that type that go along with history. Generations pass, four, four, no, four years for each inter, it's term in office. So now we've had, we're going into the second pair of terms of Obama. Three terms completed and one in process. Uh, that has been that period of history. And it's in that period of history that Snowden came forward as a, one of the people among a significant number who realize that their duty as patriots to the United States uh, uh, interest requires them to scheme to bring about the downfall, if possible, of the swine who have destroyed our, our republic. And that's the way to look at it. Because that's, that's what we actually know about Snowden from this point on, and the Snowden affair. And it's typical. Obama is something that must be removed from office. His policies are, trick, are evil. They are, are profoundly evil. He's a, actually a patriot re with respect to the United States. And despite the cowardice of many of our elected members of Congress and of other people, there are people who think it's important to play a personal role in history, to save and defend our republic and other interests which are human, humane interests. And just, we must just hope that there are a number of us to be successful in destroying that evil process which is destroying our republic.